What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna be looking at finite hard stage six and i've got a really good team that can clear it with a hundred percent success rate but just before we start to look at that uh, i just want to talk about my shards quickly um so i'm a free to play player end game and we've been saving shards um and we'll be pulling them hopefully around christmas time so this is about four months of savings so we've got another two months and hopefully we'll have a whole bunch that we can blow and get something really juicy for Christmas. Um, you can see we're a little bit low on Void Shards, and that's because of the two times for Seafy. I just had to go for it. We blew 120 Shards and got nothing. Uh, so hopefully we're pretty deep in Mercy, and we will definitely get a Void Legendary for Christmas. That would be amazing. Uh, so let's check out this finite team that we're rolling with. And the reason we're doing stage six is that, uh, this isn't the team, by the way, I was doing a clan quest. So this is the team that we're rolling with. And we'll do a run first and I'll sort of talk you through it, how it works, why it works. So the reason you want to do stage six, I mean, obviously, ideally, if you can do stage 10, of course, you're going to do stage 10. But stage 10, you know, you need really good champions. It's really gear intensive and you need lots of stats for it. So that's the reason why we're gonna farm stage six. And if you could do stage six, it is a way better than doing stage 25 on normal. You are gonna get mythical gear. Um, I've been farming it for a while now and the gear drops I've been getting have been sick. So definitely the way you wanna go. So this is the team we've got. We've got Yakal, Farrak and the Fat, um, Gina, Longbeard and Corridan the Blue. So this team is kind of, it's not really, really fast, but it's a hundred percent success rate. Um, it's about three and a half minutes to four minutes per run. Um, if you're really lucky, three minutes. So Corridan the Blue is an amazing champion for this. He's boosting our term meter. He's throwing out slows, um, sorry, freezes even. And the freezes really help with the boss. Um, so how fine art hard works, because it is different mechanics to normal is that every time you hit him when his shields are down, um, you know, the freezes are going to push back his turn meter. So you need quite a few freeze champions to make this work. So that's why Corridan's here. Longbeard is one of the best ally attack champions. Um, he can be replaced by any ally attack champion. I mean, if you've got two Farrak and the Fats, that's great. You can sub those in instead. But um, yeah, so Longbeard, basically we're using him and you want your ally attack champions to be as fast as possible. Um, ideally, we'd want uh, Cauldron the Blue to be the fastest on the team because he does the turn meter boost and increase speed on the team. Um, but unfortunately, I'm going to tweak the gear later, but this team, you know, it still works. We get the job done. Um, and Yakol, this champion has really, really impressed me. Um, he is an absolute beast. Um, this build as well, not only is it amazing for fire knight but it can be used for pve as well um such an amazing champion i really slept on this guy and underestimated him so he's really really impressed me and he's a champion that everyone can get as well so he's definitely worth investing in and he throws out a lot of freezes and when champions under freeze he hits them even harder he brings so much control to the team and again he's gonna be doing a lot of damage to the boss um, and then we've got Farrak in the fat, great champion. He can be used for, um, I know you can two key um, Ultra Nightmare. There's probably teams now that can one key Ultra Nightmare with him, but he's a great epic champion. And again, he's an ally attack champion, basically just doing the same job as Longbeard. And then we've got G-Nut, who has to be the greatest fusion of all time. I know that's a bold statement, but he really is an amazing champion, um, you know, He's throwing out the freezes on his A1 and his A3 just absolutely slams. Like literally any content that I want to speed up, I just bring him in and he will just chop down the boss in minutes. All right, so three minutes and 10 seconds. That is a good run. And we've got some Savage gear. Unfortunately, it's five star. This is a pretty good piece. Um, if I was like an, a mid game account, I'd keep this. But for an end game account, it's just not good enough. All right, so that is the run. And your call, 1.8 million. G-Nut, 2 million. 
So pretty close, pretty close between them. Um, really, really, like, like I said, you're cool. Yeah, sorry, you're cool. Yeah, cow has really, really impressed me. Um, and then Longbeard has done a decent amount of damage as well. Really surprising. And Farrakhan as well. So really, really impressed by that. So let's look at the setup for the team. Okay, so we'll start with Yakol. So round one, round two, he can do what he wants. Round three, we are locking out the A3 and we want to open with the A1. Then Gina, um, so we're, we're um, locking out A2. Then we're going to have the A2 for the second wave. And then we're locking out the A2 for the like the final round the final round is probably the most important to be honest and what you want to do is you want to be saving your bigger abilities on the second round and using them in the third round on the boss um so yeah obviously the a2 we're not really going to benefit from that so and we definitely want to be opening up with or we want to prioritize our big hitter from our a3 uh corridon basically can do what he wants on round one and round two we want to make sure that we um, lock out the A3. We want to save his turn meter boost and increase speed for the boss. And then A3, we uh, sorry, and then round three, we want to prioritize that A3. So Longbeard, we're going to open with the um, ally attack and then we're going to lock it out. Just to help speed things up a little bit. And then round two, we're just going to lock it out completely. And then round three, we're going to prioritize that A3. So everyone comes in, hits the boss, and peels away those shields. And then Farrakhan, we're going to prioritize um, his A3 as well. Beat down, slam the enemy down. Round two, we're going to lock it out. And then for round three, we're going to prioritize beat down. And we're going to lock out his A2. So I'll just show you the speeds quickly because this is like the most important thing. And you'll see they're all really fast. Like, yeah, cool. It's got some insane stats on him, like 269 speed. G nut 271. Corridan 296. Longbeard 304. And Farrakhan 288. Um, so we're gonna look at the gear and masteries. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. And we need to look at the Great Hall as well. Great Hall is really, really important. So the first thing you want to do is prioritize speed because your champions need to be so fast for this. So Speed is going to help the most. So go for speed first. Then accuracy, if you're lacking. Um, so any champion that's thrown out freeze, you need to make sure you've got that accuracy first. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to push that turn meter and you'll just wipe. So that would be your second priority. And then ignore defense. This is going to speed up your runs so much. And then I'd focus like crit damage. And then depending on what champions you have, like, um, G nuts damage is going to come from defense. Your cool will come from attack percentage. So it just depends how you want to do it. Um, but yeah, so that, and you know, I know not everyone likes live arena. Um, but even if you're losing, if you just rack up a few points a week, this is going to greatly improve your runs. You know, you're going to increase XSS rate and speed things up as well. So it's definitely worth investing in. And as time goes on as well, everyone's going to get into gold and it will get easier over time. I just know at the moment it is a real state. All right, so let's look at the gear and masteries. And who have we got first on the list? It's Yakol. Um, so he is in lethal and perception. Um, obviously lethal, because we're ignoring defense, we're going to do loads of damage but also perception just to increase our speed and our accuracy. And I'm going to go through every single piece of gear just so you know what substats you're looking for. So we've got a nice triple roll here. Um, and then we've got like all across the board. And then again, another triple roll in speed. And these are really nice gloves. And you know, we haven't got a hundred percent crit rate on him. So let's just ascend this a little bit just to increase our crit chance. There we go. So now we've got a hundred percent and these are some insane gloves. Like it doesn't get much better than that. Um, chest, um, attack percentage, and again, subs in speed and crit rate. And then we've got speed boots. I will ascend these later and hopefully we get a either speed or attack percentage would be great on these. A ring, um, attack and then crit damage on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner. And as you can see, I've not glyphed this all out. So that's what I'm going to be doing 
to just help speed him up. And, you know, the faster he is, just the better your runs will be. So these are like the total stats, but we're going to put on finite so you can see what it really looks like. So almost 5k attack, a 269 speed, 101 crit rate, 257 crit damage, and then 335 accuracy. So we're a little bit low on the accuracy side, actually. I'd like that to be a bit more around 350. That's just going to help with pushing back that turn meter. But yeah, pretty, pretty insane stats. And like I said, though, I've actually used him in Arena with this build, and he is just getting work done. He is so good. Um, Soul Reaper, so we've only got one blessing on him. But um, I feel like Soul Reap, there's, there's a few ways you can go. You could either go Soul Reap, which is going to help speed up the waves and it will help kill the boss quicker, especially when you sort of get more stars than you. Phantom Touch is great as well because Phantom Touch will help uh, peeling off the shields when you get extra hits on the boss. And then Mastery. So he's got really unique Masteries, especially for Fire Knight. So left-hand side, sort of standard stuff going on. Um, and we're taking Whirlwind of Death. So if we do get kills, again, this is going to increase our speed and just help keep those shields down and push back that turn meter. And then in the defense tree, we're going all the way down to fearsome presence. This is going to help us increase the chance of landing freezes. And that's what we need to make sure we can push, you know, just again, keeping that boss under control. And then we got Gina. Um, so me, my Gina is in a budget build. His stats are way more important than what gear you put in. I mean, Relentless and again, Savage. These would be great options, but we've gone for crit damage just so we can stack as much crit damage on it. And we've got Perception for that speed and accuracy. Again, I'm going to go for every single piece. But look, triple rolls in speed, double roll in crit rate, triple roll in crit rate, double roll in crit rate. Um, so we've got accuracy on the chest and then we've got speed on the boots. Defense on the ring, crit rate on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner with a triple roll in speed. And it's only five star, but that's fine. You know, you don't have to always have six star. It's more about where your rolls are in, in your subs. So we've got 40k HP. Doesn't really matter, but it does help. Um, a little bit on the low side on the defense, 3.3k defense. Would love that to be higher. The higher that up is better survivability and the more damage we're going to do. Um, 271 speed, so we're super fast. Crit capped, 283 crit damage, and then 434 accuracy. So there's a little bit overkill on the accuracy, so I could drop this, maybe um, swap his banner for um, a defense banner, or maybe swap the chest out for a percentage chest for defense. That would really help increase our damage. Um, and then we've gone for Phantom Touch on him just, again, to help um, speed up things on the boss. And you don't have to have them awakened. It just, obviously, the more awakening you have, the more damage you do to the bosses. It's just part of the game now for hard mode. But also, it's just going to help speed things up a bit. And then Masteries. Um, so we've gone down the support tree and we've gone for Master Hexer. That's just going to help keep things on the boss longer. And Laura still just for a teeny weeny little bit of extra speed and accuracy. And then in the uh, offense tree, we've gone for crit rate into crit damage. And again, we're taking whirlwind of deaths just to help increase our speed. Cycle of violence is a must. So we can get as many, you know, um, if we can reduce the cooldown on A3, that's going to really help speed things up. And we'll just smash away at the boss. And then just sort of standard stuff going on, you know, Heart of Glory. If we've got 4 HP, we're going to do more damage. Single out, we're going to do more damage if the target's got less than 40% HP. Uh, bring it down. So if they've got more HP than us, we're going to do more damage. And then we're going to go into Warmer, uh, sorry, Giant Slayer, because we've got triple hitters on the A3 and A1. Um, yeah, so that's, that's like the best way to do the most amount of damage to the boss. Um, and Longbeard. I think we've missed Longbeard. Where's Longbeard? There we go. He was first on the list and we jumped him. So for Longbeard, we've gone triple speed and perception. So ideally, he would just be all in speed. Unfortunately, I ran out of speed gear, but that's okay. Like perception is a really, you know, the forge 
is such a good place to forge, ironically forge um, perception gear. And, you know, we've got like a triple roll here. We've got a double roll in speed here, a double roll in shield. And then we've got only a single roll, but we need that crit rate. You know, that's going to help us do more damage, speed up the runs and help do damage on the boss. We've got a really nice chess piece. So attack percentage and then um, speed. And then speed on the boots. Uh, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet. And then this, we ideally this would be attack, but the speed is more important. So that's why, you know, a triple roll in speed. I just couldn't turn it down. I had to choose that over an attack banner because that's, it's more important that we, you know, hit the boss as fast as we can and take down those shields. So total stats on the Fire Knight are, oh, almost 5k attack. That's pretty decent considering uh, it's got a defense banner, 304 speed. Um, oh, not, not crit capped, but that's okay. That's not a priority. 170 crit damage. You know, again, that's not really that important. And then the rest of the stats don't matter too much. Um, he does have like a weaken, or, but, you know, again, he's not really there for that role. He is just there to help you get those shields off. Again, taking that phantom touch and then masteries. Standard stuff going on the left hand side into War Masters. And then uh, defense. And we're just going into Cycle Revenge just in case we do take a hit. Uh, you know, it's going to boost our turn meter and we just get another go. And then next on the list, it's Farrakhan the Fat. So again, um, I would say ideally triple speed, but. Again, I'm low on speed gear, so we're having to sub in that perception. And we'll go through every single piece again. And you can see a lot of my gear is not glyphed, and that's what I'm going to be doing to help me push into stage 10. So again, crit rate gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, and we can really, you know, again, this is lucky. We can ascend this and boost up our speed. Uh, attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And he, we do want him to have accuracy on Farrakhan because he does throw out a decreased defense and that's going to help with the boss. Um, so we've got 3.4k attack, 288 speed, so pretty fast, but we can definitely bump that up. Um, crit capped, 229 crit damage, and then 397 accuracy. Uh, Phantom Touch again, and then standard stuff going in the Masteries. And to be honest, I don't feel like he really is going to benefit from any of the other two Masteries we can take. So, you know, when you can, you don't always need to fully Mastery Champions. Save your energy. I mean, you can see I've messed up a little bit here and wasted a bit of energy, but you don't always have to do it. Save energy where you can. And next on the list, we've got Corridon the Blue. Last but not least, and this guy is essential for this team comp. So he's in double perception and speed. And he really does need the accuracy. So got double roll in speed, subs in axe as well. Double roll in speed, double roll in speed again. Another double roll in speed, uh, double speed and accuracy. And then, yeah. We need to just ascend these boots. Then attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then an uh, accuracy banner. So 37k HP, 2.6 attack, very, very low, but that's not his role. Um, 296 speed, so we need to bump this up, and ideally he should go first in the team, just because he'll help, you know, if he goes first, he's going to increase everyone's turn meter, he's going to bring increased speed, and then long haul, uh, sorry, long beard and Farrakhan can cut in, well, not cut in, they can join in with their ally protection and ship away at the boss. Um, we're crit capped, 145 uh, crit damage, and then 481 accuracy, way overkill. I should probably swap out his chest for attack percentage, do that later. And again, we've got Phantom Touch and Masteries. So again, 
basically just the same masteries as uh, your call. Um, the only difference is, and I think this is a mistake that I did make in your call, is that I took cycle violence um, just to get that chance to reduce cooldowns. But thinking about it, opportunist is better because we are going to be throwing out freeze and that's going to increase our damage by 12%. Um, so that's going to be great for Arena, and of course that's going to help speed up the waves. It's not going to help with the boss though. And again, we're taking that fearsome presence because we're throwing out freezes, and they're not always 100% accurate. Uh, sorry, not 100% chance of landing. So on, we've got three times here, and we've got 35% chance. That's going to be 40% chance. Three times, that's a very good chance we're going to land those freezes. And if you look at the A2 as well, that is. 65 70 chance and that's a two hitter so yeah it it makes the difference so guys like i said um i definitely feel like with a little bit of re-gearing because i've i've looked through my gear and i do have some more triple rolls that i can bring in um so a little bit of re-gearing and glyphs i'm sure this team will be able to take out finite hard 10 um if not i probably only need to sub out one of the champions bring in like a quad here like foley or something um, but yeah, I'm I'm so confident that we're able to do this. And when I do, I'll update you guys. Um, and a lot of these champions can be subbed out. So um, the ally attack champions can be filled by anyone. Uh, Corridan the blue, very, very difficult. He is a great champion. I guess Nekmo is one champion that might be able to sub in for him. Uh, yeah, cool. Everyone can get him. And who's missing off the list? Oh, and Gina, he was a fusion. He's not replaceable. He, I guess there's champions that can replace him, but he's like god tier. You definitely don't want to be subbing him out. But anyway, that is pretty much the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.